Hello, welcome friends to today's vlog. Let's learn a Microsoft Retrap topic. And today we are going to create a single page application using Microsoft Graph and JavaScript. Basically, I'll be uh, using Microsoft Graph to get Outlook messages and calendars events from uh, for a user who is logged in to the page. So we will be also authorizing uh, the user to the single page application using Graph. Uh, before I take it further, I would request you to subscribe to my channel, Sync Ventures on YouTube, and uh, follow me on Twitter or LinkedIn and or my blog. This tutorial I have done uh, based on uh, uh, Cameron Doar's um, uh, example. He already has a very good explanation for uh, how to create a SPA and I have used that and extended it further to get Outlook messages also. So most of the code is actually copied from his uh, source code but I've added some of the things on my own. So I have already uploaded the complete code in um, GitHub so you can access it also. And uh, as I have said here, this solution is based on created uh, on a solution created by Cameron Dar, and this is the link to, to his uh, solution also. So let's jump into the application. Um, first, I'll show the application. I'll talk about prerequisites before. So. So if I go to this, this is a single page application and you can see uh, it says welcome Kisla Sina. I am already logged in in this one. If you're doing it for, this, for the first time, it will ask you to log in and it will also ask you to authorize the permissions, which I will show you later. Uh, then if you click calendar, you will see five events or six events uh, from your calendar. And if I click on email, I will see the subject and the senders from here. In the calendar, you are also able to add new events and it will be saved in your Outlook as a events. And the this complete thing was out, actually done by Cameron Doyer. And what I have added is another tab for the email part. Okay. So before we start, we need to have uh, the developer environment set. And for that, you need an Office 65 developer program. If you don't know how to get it, I will be posting links in the description. You can check it there, or you can check my previous uh, blog about the Microsoft graph also in which I have explained. Second is that you need Node.js to do everything and that needs to be installed on the machine on which you are going to do the programming. Um, I have also talked about it uh, in the, my previous uh, vlog number five which you can also have a look uh, how to install Node.js and what, what needs to be done. Once that you have done that um, I generally use git bash to run my commands. So I go to a folder cd apps here you can see and then npx http server dot dash c dash one and this should uh, sh show up a message like this and then you will be able to um, uh, show show the localhost 8080 uh, it should be able to access localhost 8080 and in the beginning it will just show a, a m empty index dot html file which we will be updating and uh, putting our code there okay the another thing uh, we have to do before we uh, really start the coding is to have uh, uh, app permissions created so that the graph uh, APIs are able to uh, access the required details. Okay, so to do that, um, I have shown it before also in one of my blogs, but I'm going to show you again that in uh, you should go to Azure, you should log into portal.azure.com uh, through your developer account. And then you should go to Azure Active Directory, and then you should do uh, app registrations, and you should create a new registration. I have already have a registration here. You can see SPA apps, and so you should do that. And then in the authentication, um, you should select. You know, um, in this case it is not needed, but in the previous one it was needed. But in the talk API permissions, uh, you should. Get, give access to mail, mail dot read, uh, mail dot basic. So basically, I should be able to get uh, users' uh, uh, mail details or the calendar details. Okay, and if you want to add more permission, you can just do it from here. Add permission and select a Microsoft Graph, and then um, you say application permissions. Um, no, we should say delegated permission. So whoever the sign in user. We will use his, you know, so you can see I have email here and uh, similarly you can have different other types of uh, uh, calendars or calendar details also, you know, which you can get. 
so that is how you should uh, create this app permissions um if you know uh, if you have any questions you can also check my uh, previous blog about it or you can contact me if you have further questions once that is done what we need actually is the client id secret uh, which will be here and we need to copy it and we will be using it further so let's jump into the code now um so as i said uh, once you do the bash thing here uh, it will create index.html uh, in the beginning it is empty but we have added a lot of stuff here which i'll be walking you through walking you through um so uh, this is just to add the title what you have seen on the page and uh, this gcraft.png is an image file you can put your image if you need it and then we have created a navigation bar you can just sync with jsp graph and javascript tutorial and uh, all the uh, uh, navigation and everything is created we are using here you know jquery bootstrap jquery so we have referred all the js code here so we and moment js uh, for the calendar conversion of the time zones and everything right so that we have also done and msl is needed for uh, the authentication so msl provider is something which we use for uh, the authentication provider for the graph which is needed and graph sdk we have also uh, referred to our in our code which is needed to run the graph right and uh, we have different source files like ui.js or that js graph.js which i'll be also showing you through now so if we look into our application our objective is what we first we need to get the user signed in so if the user is accessing it for the first time uh, it will ask you to access it and then we are displaying this uh, home page where we are adding some uh, simple text and we are displaying welcome kislesina and use the navigation bar so this kislesina should come automatically it is not hard coded this is based on the current user okay so if we go to auth.js you will see that we have a sign in function and so this is needed for the msl client so uh, as i said before and sign in so you can see that uh, we use the msl login pop up so basically this is already provided to us so if the if user is not not logged in it will ask you to log in you know to get a pop up and then we get the user so get user method is written uh, uh, later and then we stringify the user data and you know we uh, display the and we call the method update page so update page is the method in which uh, we render the html actually which will i'll be going out showing up later then of course we need a sign out um, and get token to get the token of the msl account because if once you get a token you have to persist it so that it works on all the pages so that is what we are doing, doing here so that's all about in the authorization dot auth js it's not much uh, what we have to focus is on the uh, login part if you look into config.js this is where the client id should be put which i showed you from the app registration and the redirect url is this so we are using this as a development environment in production if you need you need a actual url right and here we are saying scopes user.read mailbox settings.read calendars read write and mail.read so it's very important that you set the scope correct otherwise it will not work so whatever information you need from the graph api you should put it here okay then we have graph.js and this is quite important uh, part of the code so here we will go from the top so we have the authorization provider so we get the token uh, from there and we write the graph client so we have created a graph client uh, variable here and we will get the user and we will say id display name mail user mailbox settings and dot get so the, here we are actually calling a ms graph to get the current user details that is me right and then we have the events um in this we have uh, events means that what we are trying to do here is to load the calendar information from here for for this page right so here we will have uh, doing um, getting the graph user first and then getting the user mailbox settings from the windows start of week end of week so we have done seven days so next seven days of the data we will get it and here we are calling you know the graph client to get the calendar view of the user uh, his outlook time zone start date of the week and you know maximum 50 events we are getting and what are the things we are getting is the subject organizer who is organizing the meeting the start date 
and the end date. So that is how you write a, a graph uh, for uh, um, uh, uh, for getting the calendar events. And then we call the update page method in which we say that we are going to process the calendar and the response is the JSON response, you know, uh, which we will processing it later. So the update page method will come later, which I will show you. Similarly, for this page, the email page, we all we need the subject and the sender. So we will write the similar kind of a code. And um, basically, these two are not needed, but I have just kept it. Uh, uh, but here we will see that what we get is me slash messages, and we need the sender and the subject. And then we call the update page method for the email part and we pass on the JSON query, right? There's another um, functionality in this that you can create new events from calendar, which I said before, and you can see it is a form where you enter the subject, attendees, start, edit, body, and create, send, create. And this method does that actually. So we use, you know, and the, we get the subject, uh, the attendee, start, and body from the, from the HTML input uh, user is providing. And then we check that at least the subject start and end date is needed. So we verify it. And then we load the, build the JSON payload for the event. So we are building the JSON here that we putting subject, start it, end it. And if there are attendees, we split the attendees in using this, you know, uh, semicolon. And then we add it to the array. And then we post it to, to the uh, JSON uh, through the graph line again. So, and this time we are using post and not get. So we add a new event and then it's done. So that's how the code runs. So basically we have three components here. Uh, one is to get the events, to get the messages, and also to get create a new event, okay. Now we have the time zone.js. Basically this is uh, hard coding all the zone mapping so we can play with it if it is needed. So, uh, so that is what it is, uh, nothing more than that. Now the next most important file is ui.js, basically you can understand from the name that we are going to uh, create all the um, uh, pages uh, what you have seen so we have got the element authenticated navigation you know here and we are creating a uh, enum kind of thing um, error home calendar email and that's what we use to call in this switch command uh, switch here So as I mentioned before, we have, you have seen in the previous graph.js that we are calling update page. So if the update page uh, is called for the email, it will go here. Otherwise it will go to calendar, home, or to the error uh, method, right? So in this, um, first we have uh, to have the show the authenticated nav. So we are building a navigation on the top, you know, so we are building a calendar navigation and the email navigation, which you are showing, showing on the top. So it's very basic. You just create a button and you know, you set the view to calendar. If the button clicked is calendar, otherwise you set, you know, and here you call get events message method and the get messages method, right? And this is what we have already created in our graph.js that we are getting messages or the events through the graph in the, uh, uh, from the MS graph, right? And then we append both the navigation, right? So, and then show account navigate user. So here we are, uh, you know, if you see this part of the code of the page, here we are seeing docs and the uh, image of the user, right? So that is what uh, we are trying to do here. So we are creating a navigation and round circle align self center, you know, so and this is very basic HTML, what we are doing here. Then, show welcome message that is the message you should see on the first page here you see and that is what we are trying to do here so we say uh, heading create element sync benches youtube spa and you know so i have changed uh, camera doors uh, and here you can see welcome user dot display name the so user is the thing which we have got from graph and we will be able to display the display name of the user from here right then we have show error if there is an error we should display the message uh, and that is what we have done here okay um, and as i said we have the function update page which basically calls different method methods based on what we are clicking 
So if you are clicking on uh, the home page, it will show the home home. It will call the uh, show welcome message method. If you are looking for the calendar uh, button, then it will call the show calendar and then the show email, right? So if you look into the show calendar event um, function, uh, what we, are, we are trying to do is to build a HTML. So we have created a div, we have a calendar, and we call show, and we have a button like a create new button, a create a event right in which we call this show new event form, which you show in the graph.js. And just we are creating a table, you know, and uh, have the organization subject start ended uh, taken from the end user. And then uh, if there are multiple uh, organizers or subjects that we just, you know, uh, for each one of the events, we are just loading it here. And similar to that, we have show email messages. So uh, we are trying to um, get the uh, get the messages from the, and creating a div uh, for HTML creation. And then we set the subject uh, sender. And then for each message, that is, uh, we are getting the graph. Uh, so basically, basically, where we are processing the JSON here, we set the uh, message ID, the subject, and the name of the uh, sender, right? And then this is done. And the show new event form, which was called later, uh, will actually uh, create four different, you know, uh, text boxes and uh, uh, calendar uh, calendar boxes, which you will be able to append. And then you saw in the graph JS that we push that as a post uh, thing, you know. So that is how it works. So if you look into the complete code structure, uh, we have got the odd.js for the authentication. Uh, config is just to say which client ID to use and, you know, and uh, what uh, scope are there for the graph. Graph.js is for calling different graph methods, uh, for getting the events, for getting the messages and also a post for uh, creating events. And index test HTML is very basic. HTML that we load all the JS files and whatever graph SDK we need. Uh, Style.cs is not much. We just have, you know, uh, padding at top 70 PX, nothing more than that. Time zone is used for uh, setting the correct time zone. And, you know, so we are, uh, that is what we using here. And UI.js is the main in which we uh, create the HTML to load it in the on the page so that is yeah uh, how it works and uh, you can see i've already shown you that if, if you click on calendar it shows the calendar events we go to the email so, so basically the idea is that it's pretty easy to do that you should call the graph get the json process it in the html and then show it on the on your page so that that is how you can create different kind of applications uh, single page applications to show different um, Outlook or any other data which is available through Microsoft Graph. And uh, at the end, I would thank again Cameron Doyle for uh, giving us a very detailed explanation of this, how to do it. And that's how I learned it. And then I extended further to learn more about it, how it can work, and also to write some more code about it. And as I said, the code is already available uh, for you to access. My code is available also um on the github and comrade our code is also available so you can also have a look there um basically my code is more or less exactly same as his but i have added some more uh, lines to get the outlook messages uh, just like he has done for the calendar so yeah that's it for today and uh, don't forget to subscribe my channel sync ventures i hope you like this video and in the next i will be taking further and uh, create another kind of app uh, in the vlog 7. So yeah, thanks for today and have a nice day. Thank you.